Hey guys, what's up? So today we're going to put everything together. The dash core components, the HTML components and the callbacks. And the final result is a very interactive dashboard. So we have a drop down where we can pick some stock prices. So let's say Beyond Meat. And the stock prices, the historical stock prices will be rendered below. So it's a very easy project, but very cool to start. So stay tuned. So let's start VS Code. And the first thing to do is to install some libraries. So let's write pip install dash dash core components. Whoops. Let's install dash HTML components. And let's take Y Finance for our financial data. Then we can create a new file, call it dash intro.py. And we can import all the libraries that we just installed. So dash, let's import dash core components as DCC. Let's take the dash HTML components as HTML and finally our Y finance and let's also make it shorter and just write YF. So if you don't know the Y finance API, it allows us to download financial data from the Yahoo API. So to build this dashboard, we'll have to get into several steps. The first one is to get the data. Second one will be to build a graph. And the third one is just to build our normal dashboard. So let's start by getting the data. So to get the data, we need to write a function. Let's call it get data. And we are going to pass a ticker as an argument. And a ticker is a identifier of a given stock. So let's start by fetching the data. So we can just say yfinance.download and we can pass our ticker as an argument. So if we print the data frame, we can see that we'll get historical prices back. So let's just run the file, python-intro, and here we go. We have our financial data in our data frame. So we just want to change a couple of things. We don't want the date as index. So we want the date as a column. So we have to start by resetting the index. So let's uh, do the F reset index. And let's set the in place equals to true. And now the date will be uh, set as a normal column. So we can actually start by filtering the columns that we want. So the close price and the date. So date here, close price. And this will be our final DF. We print it again. It's way shorter and it has all the necessary information. So now we can simply return this DF and we can use this function to get different stock prices. So the next step is to build a graph. So to do this step, actually, we need to import one more library. And let's import uh, plotly.express as px. And this is already installed by default when you install dash. So now let's just create another function and we can call it build graph. And build graph is going to take a, a DF as an input and it's going to return a px dot line. And our x, it's going to be the DF date. And our y, it's going to be our DF close price. Okay. And that's everything for the graph. Now it's time to start our dashboard. So let's start a new instance of dash. 
So let's initialize it as dash dot dash with a capitalized D. And we are going to give it a layout as usual. And the layout is going to have a div that's going to hold all the other elements. We always do that. We always have a div that contains a lot of elements, doesn't matter how many. And inside our div, we need to create a Dropbox. So the Dropbox lives inside the DCC objects. So let's take drop down, not Dropbox, sorry, drop down. And our drop down is going to have an ID. And let's just call it drop down. Okay. And besides the ID, we need to give it some options. So our drop down, it, it's going to have different stocks to pick so we have to start by setting the argument options and pass a list and inside our list we're going to pass like different dictionaries so the dictionaries always have two different keys the label and the value so for label let's start with uh, beyond mid And beyond mid, it's going to have like a value. We have to find the ticker for beyond mid. Uh, that it is just BND. Uh, we're going to copy this line. So let's just take this line and let's create two more. And the second stock, it's going to be something like moderna it's very on trend and is just mrna and the final one is going to be pfizer and pfizer as the ticker of pfe and that's everything for our drop down so now let's just run our server Let's set the debug equals to true. Get the errors prompt. And let's see what we have so far. So of course we are not saying run serve, it's run server. And now we can just check like what we have. So we have a drop down and we have our docs inside. So cool, let's go back. So now that we have the drop down, the next step is to build the, the graph itself, right? So we are also going to use a dashboard component. So it's dcc.graph. And our graph is going to have an ID of just graph because it's a simple example. And now that we have that, we can pass the callbacks. So the actions themselves. So when we are in our dashboard, we we'll like to pick a stock and automatically uh, render a graph below with the corresponding stock price distribution. So let's do that. So let's start by uh, use a decorator and say apple.callback. Our app.callback always has two arguments that actually we have to import something else. So let's come here and from dash dots dependencies let's import input and output okay and let's start by passing our output so our output is going to be our graph so we can take the graph here and we want to output in the figure property and for the input We'll have our drop down. So the ID is drop down. Let's copy it from here. And we want to take the value of the drop down. So in our drop downs, we have labels and values, right? When we pick, like, let's say beyond mid, we would like to take the value, the ticker. And later on, we are going to use this ticker in the function get data that is going to return us a data frame. Okay, so now that we have that, Let's actually write the function. 
to do all the magic behind the, the, the dashboard. So let's call it build the dash or something up to you. And here we have one input that comes from the callback. So the drop down value. And the first thing to do is to avoid non values. So every time that the dashboard initializes, we're going to get like a none, even without selecting any element in the drop down. By default, when you start the dashboard, you get a none. So if the V is none, we're just going to raise a prevent update, something else that we have to import. So let's take from dash dot exceptions. Let's import the prevent update. Okay, cool. And if the V is not none, so if we actually select an element from the dropdown, we would like firstly to get a data frame from uh, the Yahoo Finance API. So get data, this function here. And we're going to pass the V to the get data. So now we have a data frame with our historical stock prices for a given ticker. The next thing is to build our graph. So we already have the build graph here. We can just call it build graph on DF. And this will output like a figure. So we can just call it fig. And the last step is actually just to return this fig. But just bear in mind that you have to return it as a list. Because uh, you can have multiple outputs, and if you do, you have to return them like in a list. So let's start like our dashboard again. And let's see where we miss something. We miss a comma here. Uh, again, these are different elements inside a list, so we need to have a comma here. And let's kick off. You also are missing one argument inputs so let's see why okay yeah uh we are passing here a list it cannot be a list of course otherwise it's going to recognize that the entire thing is an output so let's try it now now it's working let's check our dashboard let's pick like a stock and here we go beyond mid let's try moderna nice so that's it for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. It's a small little project, but you can get a grasp on Dash. So try yourself, try different tickers and see what happens. Thank you for watching.